Hi, Kevin McCloskey and Billy Wood. We're coming to you with Stable Talk, week one of the 2024 season. Billy, here on a unseasonably cool night in middle of August in Jacksonville, North Carolina, the Stallions fall 28 to 14 to the Jacksonville Cardinals. Billy, this game, I'll be honest with you, it uh, it was very discouraging early on, actually for about two thirds of the game. But the Stallions did put together some heart and make it a respectable score towards the end. Yeah, I agree with you on that point, Dan. And also, I've got to give kudos to Coach Williams for being the class act that he is and keeping the starters off for the main point uh, for the second half. I mean, he puts June back in again, but June's going to get his numbers and he's going to get the, his his yards and all. But yes, I. Thought I thought the Stallions showed when in the third quarter, or in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, when they got going, one junior, one senior scoring the touchdowns for the Stallions. It's a lot to go on. This is a big 3A team. We're still a 2A team. It's early in the season, but this is the kind of game that Phil Padgett used to love to teach you to have to show his players where they were and where they were not and get them ready for when they got into the conference. Next week is no pushover by any means, but at the same time, Phil Padgett has said that many a time, I'd rather lose this game at the beginning of the season and then go on in the playoffs to the second, third, or fourth round than to go... 10-0 like I did in 1972, 1992, I'm sorry, 1992, and be number one in the state and have Rosewood come in and beat me again in the first round of the playoffs. So. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough game, and we hear a lot of talk with the fans and amongst ourselves about should we even play this game. I mean, it's a crosstown rivalry, but it is somewhat – lopsided in a sense as you mentioned jackson was a large 3a school we're a small 2a school they basically have twice as many students as we have and it shows they had 60 some players k counted i think 65 players dressed out 29 and that, tw 29 of those 60 plus were seniors yeah so, yeah so, so so they just wear on you you know maybe maybe we can stick with them for a while but they, they wear on you yeah um we mentioned the game you know the stallions didn't score until till late and that was somewhat uh with the, the subs in for jacksonville but it is something to build on i was i was honestly having a difficult time trying to talk about some things. It was a typical first game in the sense that both teams had a lot of penalties, yes. a lot of mistakes. Seems like Jacksonville recovered from them more quickly than us, aside from they had multiple uh, um, pass interference calls, which really gave us a break and yeah. allowed us to score that first touchdown. Absolutely. Yeah. Down the way. In fact, I, I, I may be wrong on my stats, but I'm thinking that Jacksonville maybe had more penalties than we did tonight yeah. uh, by just a few penalties. I'm not sure on yards yet because I haven't had a chance to look at that part. But, uh, again, Bo will, will get that out on their side and hopefully we will cut down on ours as well. Yeah, one thing I want to talk about, too, is special teams. The Stallions struggled mightily uh, trying to punt the ball in the first half. But to their credit, there was an adjustment. I, I was looking at the punting formation in, in the first half, and the punter was only – Eight yards deep, yes. and, and normally they're at least 12 to 15 yards deep, and so thereby he was, he was basically in the, the defensive linemen were in his face before yeah. he had a chance to punt. I don't know what happened, but it did seem they make an adjustment, and he had his best kicks in the second half. So it's kudos there, and then also on the young man who's the kicker, I believe his name is Danny Santos, yes. the place kicker, Danny. made both of his PATs and did well on his kickoff. So you know those are the little things that'll pay dividends later on. Absolutely, so, and you get that kicking team uh, going in place, and that's a good defense for you if you can get that team. Yeah starting deep in their own territory yeah. and keep it going. Uh, we're nowhere close to having the kicking game that we did when we had the Maddox boys there and, and the chip running and all that crowd through there. But it's a good plus here for the first game of the season, and, and Danny will – continue to improve i believe yeah now you've already alluded to it next week's not going to be a cakewalk um the stallions play at richlands and as everyone knows the stallions held like a multi-decade winning streak against the wildcats until two years ago when at richlands that streak was broken yeah. and right now they own a little winning streak they've won two in a row right. um and, and this is our year to pay them back so what do you think the keys are to that game I think the kids have got to get their heads out of this one here and let this one go and get out there Monday and start playing or, or, or start practicing together as a team totally because uh, I did see some times where it did look like they were together at all and, and think about what they really want to do. Uh, I'm sure that this group of players, I said earlier at the game, this group of players reminds me a lot of the 1999 and the 2000 uh, team that uh, after the year that we went the first time to the state playoffs. This is a lot uh, smaller team 
than last year so far that I've seen. But this is the kind of team that 2000 was. They're ankle biters. They're small, but they will bite the ankles of those big boys instead of pushing them out of the way. And while they're getting down there to get those ankles out of the way, the running back goes through. You know? yeah, and trying to find a positive, uh, and there, there was a lot of infighting down there. I'll be honest with you. We were down on the sidelines, and I saw a lot of things I didn't like to see. But on the flip side is – that shows the guys have fire and they have passion. And so it's better than being over there being comatose and not caring. So now it's a matter of the coaches being able to take that energy, take that passion, and channel it and turn it into wins and camaraderie and teamwork. Absolutely. So, and yeah. it, it starts next week. Yep. All right. Uh, down there, and then we come back home to White Oak, and then you're getting ready to get into the to, to the. Uh, conference play so you better be ready yes yeah, so i say okay i know it's labor day weekend guys but if you can make it out to richlands we can sure use our help there next week so kevin and billy signing off we'll see you in richlands